This time, this time yesterday, the Prime Minister was telling us how to live with COVID, uh, the end of self-isolation, at least for England. We wondered how long it would take, perhaps, for others to fall into line earlier today. The Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, announced he would be imminently dropping the legal requirement to wear masks on the underground and on the buses. But in Edinburgh, the SNP leader, Nicola Sturgeon, has been, so far at least, reluctant to follow London's lead. Those masks, they'll be needed for another month and self-isolation will stay as well. Well, joining me now, the leader of the Reform Party, that is, uh, Richard Tice. Uh, lot to discuss with Richard Tice today, uh, not least the... Uh, the necessity, Richard, as you would say, and I, I'm, I'm going to start with this actually rather than COVID, of the UK securing is, its energy supply. And to that end, you told me last week, we need to start fracking again. Uh, we'll be very clear, Colin. Good afternoon. What I said is we need to start extracting the, the treasure from under our feet, Colin. It's called shale gas. We've got about a trillion pounds worth. That's half the national debt. It equates to about 50 years of supply. And guess what it would do, Colin? You've just been talking about the impact of what's going on in Russia and Ukraine on energy prices. We could be self-reliant on energy and therefore, like the states, have dramatically lower fuel prices, dramatically lower gas and heating and electricity prices. If we use our own energy resource, shale gas, North Sea gas, and there are new technologies, Colin, so it's really important and I'll keep saying this and I'll say it until I'm blue in the face. There are other technologies. For those who are worried about the impact of fracking, put that to one side. There are other technologies to, to essentially access this shale gas, to get the shale gas out of the ground. That's great news. We should be at the forefront of using these new technologies. Imagine if we could reduce our, all our prices by 50 percent and be self-reliant and not be exposed to what's going on in Ukraine uh, and yeah. Russia. But, that but, is smart politics. That's what our it, leaders should be doing. Well, you, you say it's smart politics. I suppose there'll be plenty of people, uh, the detractors, who will say there's a, there's a reason the moratorium on fracking was declared, uh, because it wasn't safe. It may be safe in isolated parts of the Midwest, but here on this crowded island, it doesn't work. That said, I'll, I'll invite you to comment on this letter uh, from the boss of Quadrilla that was published in recent days, and he's talking about some of the, uh, the risks of earthquakes. He writes, Francis Egan, uh, the limited number of fractures that his company Quadrilla was able to do was due to the regulatory requirement to halt operations any time micro seismicity a word I'm not used to using, as that probably uh, seemed fairly obvious, induced by fracturing exceeded just 0.5%. On the Richter scale, he goes on to say, a study by Liverpool University was equated the impact of a 0.5 micro seismic event, and I can demonstrate this in a moment, to sitting down on an office chair. Thus, Correct. extraordinary. Yeah. And, and, and that's how essentially the eco zealots, well funded by overseas money, I wonder where that came from, uh, they essentially hijacked the debate and the so-called earthquakes that were happening was no different to a large van or a lorry going past your door. That's not an earthquake. That is normal living. Um, but look, in a sense, I'm going to come back to the point, whether you frack or don't frack, the asset is there. There are other ways of extracting it. We should be using that. We should be using the quadrilla wells uh, to, to use these new technologies rather than filling them up with cement, which, of course, is, is utterly ridiculous. And the key point is here, uh, Colin, that we don't need to be dependent on other nations, rogue actors, for 50 percent of our energy. We used to be an energy exporter until the Conservatives took power in 2010. We're now a massive importer. We're vulnerable. We're exposed. And we need to turn around. That's why I say it's smart politics. And this, you know, we could have this shale gas up and running and, and making a dramatic difference within three or four years. And, and I tell you that that's what I believe, that's what the people of this country want. They want cheaper energy, and they want, they're patriotic, Colin. Yeah. We want to use our own natural resources. We don't want to increase CO2 emissions by millions of tonnes importing gas from elsewhere. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's, it's more existential than that even, isn't it? I mean, it's not just about the prices. It's about 
reliability of supply, uh, not quite keeping the, the lights turned on, but making sure the heating's still working, that's for sure. Uh, Richard, we're going to leave it there. We've got a lot to get through today, but really appreciate your time uh, as ever. Thanks very much indeed, Richard Tice there.